So, <laughs> you know I'm busy. I just walked away from the camera and now I'm back in my car. You know I'm busy. When the first time in five months, I didn't film a single clip on a run or uh, in the gym during my recovery session. So basically, I uh, got the run done. I'll tell you about it back in the studio. When we talk about, yes, unfortunately, the three shoes that just aren't quite doing it for me in 2019. So I'm gonna break down those shoes for you. But uh, anyway, no shots from the run today. No shots from the recovery in the gym. Uh, you can, you know, it's, it's a standard, basically the standard stuff that I've been talking about as of late. All right, beautiful day. Oh man, I just, uh, just grateful for all of you being here. And um, we just, we just keep going. We just keep going. One run, one day one meal at a time, right? Just uh, recovering well, eating well, taking care of our bodies and our minds. Okay. Woo. Ah, cheers, YouTube family. Putting back some tea. It's getting a little late. Oh my goodness. Uh, I just, it's crazy. I was thinking back when this channel decided to continue the daily vlog last October 2018, but began to focus more so on running vlogs, I think this is one of the first days, and I, as you know, it's a daily vlog. I think it's one of the first days where I just straight up ran out of time to film throughout the day. Uh, so instead, I've had this idea on my mind to talk about, yes, kind of a challenging, that's right, challenging is the key word, uh, a challenging topic as far as running shoes and three shoes that are not working out for me in 2019 because sometimes I get excited. You get excited in running shoe stores, maybe on uh, online, like running warehouse and you're like, oh, click, yeah, I want that shoe. Click, 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 click. And then it arrives at your house and you're like, oh, darn, it doesn't work. It's not quite the right feel or the right uh, lockdown feel, or maybe it's too hard of a landing. I don't know what the case might be. So anyway, I want to update you on three shoes that are not working for me. And that's going to be today's vlog. Does that sound good? All right. I still want to bring you a little bit of uh, value, if you will. And just thanks for being here and supporting. And um, boy, I, I'm just, you know, I just can't believe where we where we've been and where we are now compared to October 2018. It's just amazing. Okay. First shoe, here you go. Oh, this is probably not a surprise, especially if you follow on Strava. You haven't seen this shoe in a long, long time in the, uh, yeah, basically in a shoe that I've run in. And so here it is, the On Cloud X. Oh man, the entire On lineup, I'm still trying to figure out what is going on. So this shoe is a six millimeter drop. It's got a, it's coming in at 7.4 ounces in my size, so 211 grams. So it's a nice, lightweight, daily trainer type shoe. But my main issue with the OnCloud X, and here's the thing. Okay, I said this about the OnCloud X about two months ago. And there you have it. That's my first impression of the OnCloud X running shoe. It feels good, feels fast. I'm wishing for a little more cushion feel, especially through the forefoot, mostly just through the forefoot, especially since I'm more of a midfoot and forefoot striker. Uh, the upper feels amazing, very comfortable, very breathable. I think they that's right. The I really, really tried to get excited about the entire on lineup. And I'm not writing them off yet, just so you know. This is just this shoe, the on Cloud X. Why do I why am I struggling? hard landing area or surface or whatever you want to call it the outsole this hard black rubber here uh so basically the on the entire on lineup and by the way this is a company out of switzerland and basically it's designed uh through this cloud outsole so basically these cloud they, they call them the clouds here and you can actually literally see right through the right through the outsole to the other side and i guess the whole idea is that those those clouds are supposed to absorb your your weight and your landing but i feel like the landing is very hard however i've heard that the on cloud swift so that shoe look it up if you want to on cloud swift i've heard that that shoe has a softer landing i suspect 
that the entire on lineup is eventually going to become a softer landing area uh, for your foot strike. So as you're coming down onto the pavement or the concrete or wherever you're running, I hope that the, it becomes a little softer landing. Right now, it's just it's just too hard. And one last point on the on cloud X, as I was increasing my volume in this training block, I basically started reaching for this shoe less and less because my legs needed more cushion, needed more absorption of the of the pounding. And so at the beginning of the training block, I was running in this shoe more. But as the miles went up and the volume went up, I was like, uh-uh, my legs need more TLC, if you will. Okay, moving on to shoe number two that is not working for me in 2019. Oh. This breaks my heart, and I'm so sorry, because I said this about this shoe maybe three months ago. This shoe feels like it's got a lot of mileage built into it, mostly through this incredible midsole, which I'm gonna measure for you here in a second. And That's right, it's okay, the sorry. Vomero 14. Oh, it breaks my heart. I was hoping so bad that the Vomero 14 was going to be basically my, one of, like, really my go-to long-run shoe uh, in 2019, but it's not working out. Uh, I will say this much, the ride is nice. I love the ride, I love the transition uh, through the foot strike, through my gait cycle. It has a nice ride, and the outsole is good, the midsole is good, but you know the major issue, I've talked about it a lot. It's the lacing system, that's right. Right here, at the top of the tongue, the lacing system is cutting, no matter how I tie the shoe, no matter how what type of lacing system I use, it continues to, the laces continue to cut into the top of my foot. And it hurts. In fact, I almost injured myself because of the lacing. Um, and I don't know, I'm not blaming it all on the laces. I'm also blaming it a little bit on the fly wire system. Nike has this fly wire system. It's those gray laces there on the side and it goes all the way up there to the top. Anyway, I tried tying the shoe loose. I tried all sorts of different ways of tying and it just, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. So I, I can't run in it. And the shoe does have a 10 millimeter drop, a 22 millimeter stack height in the heel, 12 millimeter in the forefoot. So nice, plenty of good cushion, soft landing, perfect for just knocking out a long run or a middle distance run. And uh, what else? Oh yeah, but it is heavy. And that's actually part of my strategy in training. I like running in heavier shoes, uh, especially for early in the training block, just to build up a little more leg strength because when you go from a 10 ounce shoe to a five or a six ounce shoe in a race, you feel like you're walking on clouds, like you could take on the world, like you're, you, your, your legs have pop in them. Um, so that's another reason I really was hoping that this shoe would work out for me in 2019 but it's not. So Nike Vomero 14 is off the table for me. Uh, maybe, I'm really hoping Nike, if somebody works for Nike or is out there listening that knows somebody that works for Nike, let them know the Vomero 14 lacing system is cutting into, and it's not just my foot, just so you know. Other people are complaining about this as well online, on YouTube, and uh, all over the place. Like, So it's not just me. Um, and one last point I wanted to make, or is that it? I'll probably save this shoe with the hopes that the Vomero 15 will be updated with a better lacing system or a better tongue uh, to protect the top of my foot. Oh, I hope so. Okay, shoe number three. I haven't run in this shoe in a long, long time, but as we transition to trail running in the summer, right? Everybody's getting excited. Right now, my go-to trail shoes are Innovate and Solomon, but now, Nike with the Wild Horse 5 and the Terra Kiger 5, they are also gonna start working their way into the rotation. Last year, I was trying to deal with plantar fasciitis real bad. So I was testing different shoes and basically my theory was that maybe a stabilized shoe with a little more rigidity would help protect the fascia, but now I'm more in the camp that a more neutral shoe with a little more flexibility uh, through the midsole is actually better for me. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, I felt like the more, yeah, just a shoe that's more flexible helped loosen up the fascia more in the bottom of my foot. So I was trying the La Sportiva Tempesta GTX last summer, and I've tried it again this past spring, and it's just too rigid. That's right. That's why this shoe is not working. If you are doing a 30% trail run, 70% hike, 
I'd say you could use this shoe. Now, I haven't tried many other La Sportivas on out in, out in the trails, but I have tried them on in like REI, and I just get the same feeling. They're just a little too rigid through the midsole. Now, I'm sure there's other La Sportiva trail shoes that have a little more flexibility to them. I know they're out there, but this guy, the La Sportiva, Tempesta GTX is just not going to work for me in 2019 as we all begin to get outside more as the temperatures rise at least here in uh, here in the northern hemisphere so I just wanted to update you on that like I think La Sportiva is crushing it with respect to durability and build quality this is an Italian company just so you know they're based in northern Italy I really think they're onto something but it's just a little too rigid through the midsole and now listen everybody's foot is different who knows maybe these shoes are working for you if they are maybe let us know down in the comments that'd be cool but for me the three shoes in 2019 that are in the penalty box are the on cloud x the nike vomero 14 and the la sportiva tempesta gtx all right there you have it question of the day has nothing to do with these shoes instead the weekly roundup i want to hear what is your high from the week and your low from the week with respect to training? So my high, my low, sorry, my high, let's start with the positive. My high was definitely the 22 mile high altitude, rolling hills, nice solid long run. But that probably led to my low, which was yesterday when I wanted to go a little further, ended up cutting the run short with a five mile recovery run because of DOMS. That's right, delayed onset muscle soreness. I was so tired and sore. I'm really glad that today felt great, felt great. So it's just like that little reset button helps so, so much. So anyway, thanks for hitting it up down below with the question of the day. And thanks for bearing with me on this daily vlog. Hopefully you learned something from these three shoes and uh, I just love you. I just love you. Thank you again for being here. We're gonna keep marching forward one day at a time, one day at a time. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you.